Hello everyone, welcome to the lecture on media assistance and development. This lecture is a part of your paper on development communication. In this module, you will be having a clear concept of assistances provided by the media in development process and the influence of media in changing the knowledge levels, behavior patterns and actions of the people. In this module, we will try to provide a structure of the assistance provided by the media and communication strategies in the development and social change process of the third world. In our previous modules, we have noticed that how media was prescribed different roles and significance in development according to the development paradigms. Since the 1970s, the sole importance on the mass media was comprehended by the organizational as well as the interpersonal communication forms. Further, as we also observed that there has been a never renewed interest in the traditional cultures post the emergence of alternative development leading to the reconsideration of the traditional media as medium of information and awareness. This module will also discuss about the different roles assigned to the media and the present interest in using the information and communication technologies in development. Mass media and development in the third world before we proceed into the discussion we need have we need to have a clear understanding of what is meant by a traditional developing society and a modern society. As pointed by the learner and Shram in a developing country, traditional societies coexist along the modern structures. The modernization approach of development considered the traditionalism of developing societies as backward and visualized to bring in a modern world through diffusion and domination of information and infrastructure. Wilbersham, what did he said? Developing nations have innumerable problems like poverty, poor health and nutrition, education, inadequate political infrastructures, lack of adequate agricultural practices, deprived social services, gender discriminations and several others. Moreover, in such nations, there is weak or insufficient political mobilization regarding these issues and thus the notion of using the mass media arises for mobilizing the larger population about these development issues. Undoubtedly, media possesses the power for reaching out to huge audiences. Communication specialists had pointed out the objectives of media in development stating that it, is not on, it not only can mobilize the grassroots levels, but it can also facilitate the formation of a responsible, empowering and democratic form of society. During the 1970s, research scholars and administrators realized that development is not a straightforward process and it was thought to be while planning. A number of peripheral factors affected the process. As we have learned earlier that in the modernization paradigm, mass media was regarded as an independent variable of the development process. Now the question was, does this evaluation of the role of mass media valid in the third world nations or not? To answer this, studies showed that mass media were dominant variables in the growth process. Further researchers argued that in a developing nation, people were readily available for mass media conversion. Owing to the lack of mass media, mass society phenomenon or lack of significant social ties. Rogers in 1976 claimed that in Asia and Latin American nations, socio-political and economic limitations 
reduced the influence of mass media in development process. The ideological biases from the West can be held responsible for these constraints. Habermas theory of communicative action projects the indecisive character of the mass media in development. In the development literature, we notice that mass media communication had been considered major agents in social development. During the 1950s and 1960s, central focus was on the mass media and it quite neglected the interpersonal and indigenous networks in the development process. Mass media like radio and television were loaded with the task of disseminating information to the wider society. For instance, in underdeveloped nations, government and extension agencies would use the medium of radio to reach out to the agricultural belts, giving information on how to increase the yields. But as we mentioned earlier, the communication process till the 1970s was, was basically unilinear and on one way with little or no scope of feedbacks and people were regarded as the passive receivers. The scenario changed with the emergence of the idea of self-development as emphasized by the alternative paradigm. Development scholars opined that for development in the grassroots level, it was important to consider the significance of the user-initiated activities at the village level. Thus, the idea of communication for self-development basically emerged. The emphasis was given on the bottom to up flows of information rather than top to bottom information flow from the government to the masses. Here we notice one more significant point that the emphasis was on the use of appropriate media and not on the popular mass media. The significance of information and mass media were found to be essential by the early communication models. Sociological studies of mass communication noted that how mass media affected the society at large and self-development notion. The role of communication in self-development was conceptualized as well as operationalized in the alternate paradigm. Rogers in 1976 precisely mentioned a few roles of media and communication. He noted that one of the chief functions of media is to circulate the information for the accomplishment of local communities and also to provide information support for development. We can cite the example of radio as a case of self-development initiation by the media. We know that rural radio forums since its inception have been providing information support in the village levels on agriculture and other similar issues. Though it was a case of top to down information flow, yet the final decisive authority were with the audiences. Once the information was scattered, the listening groups could discuss the relevance of new information and use it as per their needs and demands. Thus, we can state here that media acts as the catalyst in addressing the social cause and, de and self-development efforts. In this context, Shram noted that media and its communication power can mold the social structure and when appropriately mixed with interpersonal channels can actually foster the development process. Folk media in development as noted earlier that for a long period of time the role of traditional folk media was ignored in the development process by the initial modernization paradigm. In this paradigm anything that was even slightly connected to the local traditional culture was avoided and considered a barrier for the implementing modern behavior and attitudes. In such a stage, development communication scholars anticipated that development in a society is a systematic process and actually transcends from oral based communication culture to the culture of technology mediated communication. 
mass media had always been regarded as agents of social change and development. It was the post 1970s period that considered the re-emergence of traditional media culture as the enabler of development. Through the use of dialogic communication and participatory approach, folk media proved to be useful in enabling grassroots development. During the 1970s, a number of international workshops and seminars were conducted by UNESCO addressing the importance and potential of traditional media in development. Traditional forms of communication were persuasive and thus called for re-examination of its scopes and advantages. Unlike the mass media, folk media were flexible and could incorporate development considered messages in their formats and promote planned transformation and change in society. Traditional forms are not only inexpensive but are also relatively inexhaustible in its themes. Folk dances as folk media with their experimentation and messages of development communication. They are considered appealing and people at the marginalized level could relate with it. What we gather from the above discussion is that traditional media were not never concepts rather their functions of social communication were never identified in the dominant paradigm of development. The scholars also raise some critical concerns of using the folk media for development process. There are scopes of incorporating development based messages in the themes of folk media content and at the same time there remains the chance of fundamentally destroying or manipulating it in the process. Thus, employing the medium for larger development is a delicate task. Folk media can work advantageously if incorporated with the mass media as it will give the much needed geographical spread to the folk media and a wide range of information and development themes in the local traditions. Contrary to the popular notions that adoption by the mass media will decrease the originality of the folk media, it actually can increase the popularity of traditional culture. We have successful examples of adoption in our television and film history. In fact, the integration of the folk culture or theme in the popular media can help in legitimizing the television or film among the vast spread rural weavers. ICT innovation and development since the 1970s, there had been a steady progress of the information and communication technologies. In short, ICTs mean the electronic channels of communication information. United States and other European nations have long become the information societies. Rogers in 1976 noted that one of the main objectives of these developed countries was the production and distribution of information technologies. In the third world nations, since 1975, there was a spread of the information technologies like the communication satellites, cellular phones, computer and the internet. Palapa experiment of Indonesia and site satellite instructional television experiment and the Kheda project in India are some of the successful examples of application of information technologies for development during the 1970s and 1980s. In the above paragraphs, we have observed the role of radio in development, especially in rural areas. Similarly, television with the assistance of satellite communication has been used effectively for development. Satellite communication technology provides possibilities for reaching out to larger distances including the most remote areas of the country. Site project was undertaken for a year in 1975 to 1976 to produce development programs through satellite communication in six states including Odisha, Karnataka, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat and Andhra Pradesh. 
the main efforts were to improve the quality and horizons of education and training, health, nutrition, hygiene and agriculture in the rural areas. This particular experiment also demonstrated the downsides or limitations of the technology assistance and thus another project was initiated. Kheda communication project in 1975. Under this project, television sets were installed in around 443 villages in the Kheda district of Gujarat. The television programs concentrated on development issues concerning the rural poorer people and for their upliftment. Advocates of development have supported the integration of telecommunications for rural development. Other significant phenomenon under the advanced communication technologies was the establishment of public call services PCOs and the telecenters. It was during the 1990s that the internet was exported to the developing nations and initially other significant phenomenon under the advanced communication technologies was the establishment of public call services PCOs and the telecenters. It was during the 1990s that the internet was exported to the developing nations and initially its penetration was relatively low and the concept of ICT was considered to be quite urbane. Though with the changing socio-economic situations in the third world nations, the applications of internet and the ICTs has supported rural development in many areas like agriculture and community development. For example, ICT can provide the rural farmers the information of market possibilities and negotiating prices for their field produce, handicrafts, fishery, ecotourism, improved educational opportunities, training of health workers and transportation all can be enhanced through the implementation of locally appropriate technologies and services. Apart from the growth of the small businesses and providing a window for assessing global information, ICTs also offers scopes of documenting local knowledge practices. What we mean to say here is that for the steady development, participatory approaches and ease of access to information are vital. There have been strong criticisms of the imbalances of news and information flow from the western developed capitals to the third world. Thus, internet and ICT can enable sharing news and information within the develop developing countries effectively. We have so far discussed the potentials of ICT in integrated development, but in the coming up paragraphs, we will look at the constraints inhibiting the ICT based information usage in remote areas. Technological supporters have emphasized on the use of ICT vigorously, if not directly, then through intermediaries for development. Now, the pertinent question is are ICTs a boon for development? What is unfortunate is that there has not been much hype of the limitations of ICT in developing countries. Debates and discussions are more on the rural underprivileged conditions and on the ICT advantages. But what we need to truly consider is the actual conditions of the rural underprivileged people of the third world nations. ICTs are icon for modern development but problems faced by rural people in assessing ICTs are plenty like illiteracy, inadequate resources and infrastructure, digital divide. There are issues of inequality in rural and urban areas and thus arises the issue of knowledge gap. It implies that information received is only relevant when the sender and the receiver share common culture and priorities. Thus, the question is how relevant is ICT and internet in areas where there is priorities revolve around the basic amenities. It is quite unlikely that with such prevalent issues, the rural poor will be able to assess the benefits of ICT. 
in low income nations the main development goal lies in bringing the ICT skills to as many people as possible for the greater claimed benefits. Critique of the role of mass media in development Development scholars have argued that development researchers have inappropriately assumed the pro problem of illiteracy which is a major problem in developing nations considering the lower socio-economic statuses and prevalent inequalities. Well, like other social establishments, infusion of mass media too can increase the possibilities of knowledge gap and inequities between the people belonging to different socio-economic classes. The persistent knowledge gap is socially significant because it might give rise to social disparities especially in developing countries. The situation in US and Europe were far different from that of the developing states which were stricken with gross inequality and poverty. The communication research of the 1980s increasingly emphasized the larger role of political and economic structures rather than the role of individuals in the development process. Quite often, it was observed that the people who were to be the prime beneficiaries of development process were regrettably not reached. The elite sources often controlled the media messages in the developing countries and were not found to be appropriate to the needs of rural masses. A little space was devoted to development issues in the media content, thus access of media to the rural people was a major constraint. Under communication was a major state of problem for the third world countries. The impact of social structure as the mediating variables in the development led to the reconceptualization of role of mass media. In conclusion, from this module we learned that the modern mass media as well as the alternative networks of communication channels play an integral part in the development process. The role conferred to the media and communication in the process of development transformed quite meaningfully during the 1970s. The participatory approach and the user initiated activities gained momentum in the development process and the revised notions of development components like benefits of folk media, increased grass root participation led to the re-examination of relevant channels of development. Contrary to modernization beliefs and the notions of the diffusion theorists, modern media and the traditional forms of communication are more effective when used combined as per the needs and constraints of the societies. We have also learned that the modern mass media were mechanically transplanted from the developed nations into the third world countries and they imposed domination and diffusion of ideas. In other words, mass media in development process basically reflected the interests of the dominant developed classes or the marginalized poorer nations. Further, in addition to the mass media, the traditional media also plays a vital part in the development process. We learned how for the development process, emphasis was given on the need for information at the grassroots at the grassroots level rather than on the authority level. The mass media through interpretation, analysis and discussion point out that drawbacks and emphasis on the need for change and development. The media in its developmental and transformation role function as the decision maker as well as the educator. Folk media also played significant role in development process and were highly participatory in nature. The information communication technologies have also played a significant role in development since their innovation. Applications of ICT in the development process 
could be found in the development of history of US and other Europe countries of Europe. Horizontal flow of information, news and views are critical in rural communities as well and development support representatives like various agencies and NGOs can increase such possibilities through internet despite, despite several setbacks. Finally, we can say that the successful development strategies through media and ICT can enable improving the lives of the people in several ways. For more details, please read the module carefully and attempt the questions given at the end of each module. Thank you.